What is going on gamers, Evatrix here and today we are going to be talking about my top 5 totems that I would like to use in Guild Wars that I rotate depending on the type of base but also this doesn't just has to be uh, Guild Wars totems, it could just be in general. Now the first one that I want to go over I feel is probably the best totem overall and that is the Ares totem for no other reason that it just destroys your energy not only does it destroy your energy but if your heroes die under calamity they're done they're not reviving they're not doing anything else so you guys know aries proc reduces energy by 90 and inflicts silence for 4.5 seconds now that can completely destroy somebody relying on pumpkin duke stacks to go into your base and try to just take you out or in guild wars if you're trying to use snipers or, or maybe they have a skull knight coming into your base if this hits them and that skull knight dies you you right there you stop their push so i feel like calamity is probably one of the most used totems in the whole game just because it's it's aries and we all know what aries brings to the table now the next one that i want to talk about is the valentina totem now the valentina totem again is also very uh used for the main reason that she completely dispels all silences so for instance if you are on defense on your base and there's an Ares that is silencing your heroes once this totem triggers all your heroes that are within that uh, proximity is going to get rid of the silence but not only that it gives them a ton of energy and that is a huge huge advantage for you because usually in guild wars you're going to be getting hit by Ares repeatedly and that means that your heroes will more likely than not have no energy so valentina will infuse them with energy and then you'll have a fighter's chance and a lot of time you just wipe them because everything is going to proc right then and there and you're just going to completely stop their run so an Ares and a Valentina totem somewhere in the middle of your base that can proc at once or simultaneously, that could be very deadly. Now another one that I like to use is the Medusa totem. Now the reason for this, let me go ahead and show you why. Now it deals damage to, um, to enemies for 6 seconds, but the thing is, is that it procs in two different areas which can be very beneficial. Now one hex petrifies enemies for 1 second which is the one that stuns them. The other reduces heroes energy by 75 which is kind of like a Ares totem in a way except it doesn't inflict silence. So in guild wars usually people scatter the heroes unless they're going head to head with you depending on the base. Now if they're going to be scattering the hero trying to snipe you if they hit this medusa totem there's two locations in where they are really really going to be hurting. Especially if you have two entrances like this one usually they'll be coming from just two directions and once this totem procs they, it's only going to proc either specifically on one side or it's going to proc on both sides which can be supremely supremely deadly now there's another totem that i want to talk about that i feel uh, might not be used as much as i think it should be but that is the trixie treat totem now the Trixie Tree Trotum is is not um, it's not very intricate. There's not a lot of reading to do or anything like that. It deals damage to five targets, but specifically it removes their buffs. Now that is huge. Why is that huge? First of all, if they're using Pumpkin Duke stacks, that's gone. If they're using Cupid to help with their damage buff, that's gone. But specifically. If they're using Skull Knight and they're relying on the Skull Knight to tank your team while under the, call, the Skull Knight proc, that's not going to work. Because as soon as the Skull Knight goes over this and the Dirty Tricks hits the Skull Knight, the Skull Knight procs completely wards off. So Skull Knight is not going to be doing as much damage. He's going to be taking full damage and it renders the Skull Knight useless. So this is something that can really, really turn the tide whenever there's like one Skull Knight left that's trying to solo your base. If this hits them and you have just like one hero, that one hero can completely turn the tides. Now, the last one, no one likes this totem. Just a precaution, no one likes it. We've all ran into it <laughs> and it's never fun, okay? And that is the Atlanta Core totem, yes. Now in Guild Wars you don't see this totem often because a lot of times with sniping that Atlantic Core totem is not going to be very effective. But if you're raiding and you're relying on Pumpkin Duke stacks, on Cupid buffs, on Frenzy, 
you run into this Atlanticor totem and your heroes go frenzy on that one hero that has this Atlanticor totem, they're all dead. Come on. We've all been there before. We've all had your heroes just run straight into an Atlantic War totem and then they're all dead. And then at the end you're like, really? Was that necessary? It's effective, but it's just as annoying because it can completely kill your team. And then you either have to wait the timer or you gotta pay the gems. Just because you ran into an Atlantic War totem when you were like speed raiding or you weren't paying attention. Trust me, it's happened quite a few times to me. Now. Here's my question to you. Those were my top five, but obviously there's like 40, 50 totems that could be uh, used in this game. So I want to know which ones you think are one of the least used or maybe some of your favorites. Leave it down in the comment section below. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say because maybe I'm overlooking one that should be used more often. I don't know. I want to hear from you guys. But yeah, thank you guys for watching and until later.